learn the tune today, we're going to be playing the Spoon River Jig from Niall Wilson. And I recorded this at Niall's house in 1995 with my buddy Chris Germain playing the guitar. And it's on a CD we, the Missouri Fiddlers Association put out back at the same year. And uh, you can get that. I think I put, I'll put up a link to that here at the KDHX page. And I sent it to my patrons at patreon.com forward slash Charlie Walden. So here we go with the Spoon River Jig. And thanks. Oh, here's, here's Chris. Here's the guy right here. That's the man. Hey, he's on the, he's hey, on the record. Hey, Susan. Yeah. He's on the record. You know, Spoon River, that's in Illinois. My folks, my people came from that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, so let's play this tune in G. The Spoon River Jig from Niall Wilson. Here we go. There's dots, folks, and there's a tab, too. And I'm going to be playing from the dots today because Niall was a very freewheeling style of fiddler. So we gotta, i got to have something to go on so I don't get all messed up. Here we go. with an outside air in and I'm done for, you know. <laughs> Alright, here we go. there and uh, 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 what, what, would I want, what did I want to say about that? Oh, and so Niall uh, plays, I, I tried to notate this a few times in the music cause where it was real obvious that he was doing this, but he played, he was a guy who played ahead of the beat and if you were, happened to be accompanying him and you didn't know his music, you would think he was speeding up all the time. I saw this many times with someone who didn't play with him often would uh, start backing him up, and Niall's always pushing ahead of the beat, but he's actually not speeding up. He's playing ahead of the beat. And so when he does that, the person on the guitar thinks they need to go faster. Well, now, now the beat is faster, so he's playing ahead of the beat on that beat, and it becomes a horrible cycle where they're soon playing so fast that neither one of them can play. So, so you have to be aware of that with Niall's music. Remember we did this one, uh, this tune uh, a while back? Phrasing is is uh, 
there's all these parts where, and he does some pausing too. He pauses and then starts playing, seem like he's playing faster, but he's really not. He's just getting out ahead of the beat. But that's a really great way to drive a square dance. I mean, he was one of the best square dance style fiddlers I think I ever heard. He that that kind of forward motion of the tune is very infectious and makes you want to tap your foot. So, whereas a lot of other players play kind of right on the beat or. Uh, maybe the Eastern style fiddlers play a little behind the beat sometime, or if they're trying to make it swing, you're playing behind the beat. Uh, but no, Niall was pushing the beat all the way, but he wasn't speeding up. So see, that's the that's the tricky bit. So let's see if we can. Uh, hey, Susan Goodis, I haven't seen you in a long time. Nice to nice to have you here this morning. So let's play a little bit of this Spoon River jig, and if you have the dots, follow along with the dots. Otherwise, I'm just going to play it phrase by phrase. And here we go. Let's see, if we get closer, closer, closer. That's like, the, I like the, it's like the Chucky movie again. <laughs> I think I'm obsessed with the Chucky movie. <laughs> I'm just gonna play uh, the first part. Now you notice too, if you've got the dots, and I'll tell you this before we play along, is that the first part really is 16 bars because he doesn't play it twice the same way. So even though it's still kind of the first part. It's just one big long part, so uh, you have to be aware of that. So when we start out the tune, we're just going to play, and there's no pickup notes, so we're just going to go right into it. So it's, there's two of these e, Bs on the E string. That's the first little phrase. Okay, and then the next little bit is... A lot of little syncopated little bits in there too. So start on this G here. One more time. So back to the beginning, it's like, I'll play you what we got so far. So can you hear it? It's kind of, it's peppy sounding. That's the best, the best way I can describe it. So we're gonna play that now slow. Here we go, ready, play. Now I'm going to play you past where we where we've just gone over, so that you can hear this leading the beat thing. He's he's playing across the bar line, and I've got that written out that way. I don't know if it's you know if it's written exactly the way he played, but it gives you the 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 cue that you need to play across the bar line. So here we go. Oh, don't do that. One more time. See, so I went. Getting ahead, out ahead of the beat. So it's if I was playing one, two, one, two. So that's D B D G B, but but that D leads. So if I go, let me try it one more time. There it is. Okay, so just remember, be aware of that that little that, that note. So let's play that, and then that's a bar we've already played. That was in the first couple of first phrase we did. So it's. Open E. And the last bar is. That 
you probably heard that in other tunes, that little finish off there. Start on this B. It's one of these where you don't use the middle finger at all, the second finger at all. Then those two together sound like this. time the whole all the way up from the beginning up to that point so here we go kind of slow though remember it starts here okay here we go ready play One. lead the beat I'm going to play it massively slow. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, play. Now we're going to go to what really is the second time through the A part, but I've got it written as one big part that's 16 bars because it's not quite exactly the same, okay? So let me play you that part. So now instead of doing this, we're going to start with... See, that's just exactly what we played in the other part. So, but except instead of going... We're going... Try that with me. Start right here. One more time. Hey, Eugene. did that in the first first time through, so didn't we? Okay, let's try, let's try those parts together. Just listen one time. So that's... Okay, try that together now slow. Start on this D here. Now we're going to vary from the uh, first time through. Now that's all, the whole bar is just the B note and it's da 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 da. So it's. You played that bar before. So if we start here on this, like pickup notes. Slow now. One more time. Start on this G. And then something we've done already in the other in the other part. Well, let me play the whole A part one time at a moderate tempo, and then we're gonna play it together super slow. All right, here we go. Ready, play. Thomas is 
here too. All right. Lurking around with the regular crowd. Yes, we allow lurking. Lurking is permitted. All right, so uh, let's try that again now, so, really slow. So for all that whole, what I'm calling the A part, it's 16 bars. And you know, like I said, there's that little difference at the end with that, that. All right, here we go. One, two, ready, the B now. Oh, sorry about that. Here we go, one more time. Ready, play. second part. That's the B part. Let's try the B part. So at the end of the, if I just play, I got one pickup note, that D. And again, we got a place in there where we're going to lead the beat. So remember, there's a pickup note, open D, and then the G. So it's so it's. That's some. That's some. What is? Is that the T-berry shuffle? I think maybe it is. All right. That's the first bar there. And the next bar is. Those together sound like. two bars of the tune and then so this so start with this G here G B and then A G A G and then some G arpeggio notes So far, I'll start with this D pickup note.
there we're gonna now here's the part where we're playing across the bar line again so it's like Starting this open D. And here's a bar you've already played. I'm going to take you all the way up to that point. Play that part up to there, kind of slow here with me here. Start with the open, this guy, the pickup number, remember? Here we go. Ready, play. Scale, isn't it? Yeah, it's D to D up to G. Then G up to B. Then Another little scale starting on G. You know, that's one of the exercises I have people do who are taking lessons from me is this thing where you go but see there's a little bit of that so it's and once you've plowed that ground before if you played that arpeggio or then that scale exercise when you come to those four notes, five notes, they'll just fall right into place. Let me play the whole second part. Here we go. play it together slow. Start on this open D here. We're going to play it about like that. Here we go. The pinky is the tough finger for lots of people, and the only way to get better at it is just to use it. You know, play tunes that force you to use your pinky in all kind of creative ways, and you will. Uh, it'll big payoff, big payoff. So, all right, I'm going to back out a little bit here so you can see what a, my bow is doing, and uh, let's play through it a couple times. All right, and then I'll pull out the mandolin. And uh, if you missed a note or two, as I always say, you can always pick it up with the mandolin. Uh, here, here we go, here we go. I'm gonna play it kind of at moderate tempo, but not super fast. So.
that's the tune, Spoon River Jig. Thanks again, Kim, for suggesting it. It's a great. That's one of Niall's tunes that I didn't actually play much until you suggested it for this, and I got busy, buckled down, and learned it. It's a really nice tune. It's one of the tunes that he designated as tie hacker tunes. I think there were four on that recording that he said were from the tie hackers, and that was one of them. 